God calls you blessed. Uh, the definition for the word blessed means having the ability. My God, my God. 
He's saying that we have to let go of the bank. We cannot live on the bank. See, if you live on the bank, you're living from a place that you were once used to. God is calling us to something new. We have to get into a new atmosphere. See, if, if I live in the old me, the old me is coming from a place of rejection. So now that I'm trying to step into a new place that God is calling me, I'm still thinking with the mindset of possibly being rejected. And God is saying, no, I accept you. That's it. Who else matters? That's it. That's it. Oh my God. If, I, if I'm, I'm stuck on the bank and I'm used to not having, I'm right. used to lacking. Right. I'm used to always in need and God is giving me more. I'm coming from the place of, oh, I, I, I can't do yeah. this. I got to yeah. hold on to this yeah. because what if, what if? No, God is saying, wow. I supply your every need. Yeah. If I give you the day and it runs out today, I will give you tomorrow. Mm. Again, and the day after, and the day after. He supplies our every need. Yes. So he's saying we have to get off of the riverbank. Yes. So you know, this year, um, you know, we declared at the beginning of this year that this is the year of manifestation. Yes. You know, and when we think about manifesting, we think about like, you know, manifesting everything that we, everything that we, we need, manifesting everything that we want. God is saying in this day, he is talking about manifesting you. Come on. You. He's saying, everything that I put in you, it was always in you. That's it. That's it doesn't it. matter if you feel inadequate. It doesn't matter if you feel less than. It doesn't matter if you feel not good enough. If you feel unworthy. If you feel too dirty. Like you messed up too much. God is saying, everything that I put in you is in there. I'm trying to manifest it out. Yeah. I'm trying to make it into the perfect. We turn to Matthew 6, uh, 31, 33. 30, I'm sorry, Matthew 6, verses 31 through 33. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear, or where's that job, or where's that promotion, or where's my husband, or where's my wife, or where's that acceptance letter. God is saying, do not worry for those things, for after all these things, the Gentiles seek. Your heavenly Father knows all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yes. And his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. God is saying, you don't have to worry about manifesting things. He said, worry about manifesting you. The things will follow you. The word says, goodness and mercy follow you. Come on, come on. So we, 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 we know the mercy. Okay, because we need the mercy. I need the mercy. <laughs> but the goodness follows you. Everything that is good follows you. Everything that is good that God has for you follows you. That means you over here, it's right here. You over here, it's right here. It follows you. It follows you. It doesn't just look for you and wait for No, it follows you. Yeah, I love it. If you go out of town, goodness is going out of town. Amen. Come on, come on. If you decide you're going to Paris, goodness is going to Paris. Amen. I love it. I love it. So manifestation is in the river. This is why we must jump in the river. Okay, so I have three points that I wanted to speak on about this river. Point number one, the will of God is alive in the river. It's alive. So the will of God is alive. The will of God is not just a plan that's written down and he's going to try to carry it out. No, it's alive. It's moving. It chases you. It pursues you. His will pursues you. Everything that God is, he always was and he always will be. Remember, God exists outside of time. So... If God is a healer, he always was a healer. He will always be a healer. If God is a deliverer, he always was, he always will be. There, there, there's no need to wait for God to manifest. He is the one who manifests. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're the ones that jump in and out. So God's presence is the river. God's presence is the river. We're the ones who jump in and out. We're the ones who experience and not experience. We're the ones who who jump in and overtake or wait. That's it. Yes. If we're waiting for something, it's in His presence. Yes. 
We're, there's so many things that, that we want for our lives and we're waiting. We've been waiting years. And I'm speaking even for myself, years. That once I jumped in, came like that. Because it was always there. It's just that I was not in, so I didn't know. Right, right. So, like I said, we're the ones that jump in and out. And I'm going to prove it to you. If we can turn to Daniel 10 and 12. Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before God, before your God, your words were heard. I have come because of your words. What This is the angel of the Lord speaking to Daniel. The angel of the Lord was traveling to Daniel and he took a while to get there. So the question was, what took you so long? He was saying that it's not that I wasn't coming from the moment that you made up your mind. He says, from the first day that you set your heart, meaning that you didn't even speak, God saw your heart. From the first day that you surrendered to God, I was on my way. Amen. <laughs> There's so many things that we want that are on their way. Yes. Yes. But you gotta meet them in the river. Okay. Oh, They're in the river. Yes. You can't be on the beach. Yes. You drive and, 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 and everything you want is consumed in God's presence. Yes. Oh my God. When you give your life to Christ, the enemy is not the only thing that is after you. The will of God is after you. Yes, yes. The will of God is pursuing you from the moment that you that you step in line, that you step in the river, you feel the flow of God. A lot of us we think that, you know, we, we know the part that, you know, once you give your life to Christ, the enemy wants to come and shake things up and destroy it, which is true. That's what he wants to do. But the will of God is stronger than any enemy. So it's not as if though, oh, I'm scared if you get saved because then trouble gonna come. No, trouble gonna come anyway. Right, right. Getting saved is being protected. It's being yeah. guarded. There are certain things that cannot stand in the river. God made us to be able to live in the river. Like we were born in our natural bodies, of course, we cannot live in rivers. But in our spirit man, we were made to live in the river. That's right. I was, I was researching and I learned about, um, this is a while back, uh, about an alligator or a crocodile. They can actually sleep underwater. So literally, they can live underwater. They can literally, you know, travel, see, hunt underwater, and they can sleep underwater. They will come up after a while for air or whatever, and then go right back down and go to sleep. And they don't sleep for 10 minutes. I heard of something like they can sleep 20 hours or something. That sounds so good. But, you know, <laughs> that they can live, they are adapted. Not only can they live on land, they can live underwater. God made us as so that we can live underwater. Wow. In the spiritual realm. That's it. So, Psalms 138 verse 8, it says, I will perfect that which concerns you. Your mercy endures forever. Uh, my mercy endures forever. I'm sorry. The Lord will perfect that. I'm, I'm talking as if I'm him, right? So the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O oh Lord, endures forever. What he's saying is every moment of your life, God is working towards your perfection. That's it. That's At every moment my towards God. your life. That's good. My God. God is working you. God is, is moving. He's putting things in place towards your perfection. Even if that means a trial. There's a lot of times we go through trials and like, why, why again, why again? Because God is perfecting you. Thank you, Lord. There's things that you're going to go through that you're going to be able to deliver someone out of. Yes. I was, I was reading um, the story of David about how he went up against Goliath. Now, long story short, Goliath was the Philistine warrior. Now, we know Goliath as the giant. Like, oh yeah, they sent out a giant. No, there were many of them. 
and he was the champion. That's right. Yes. He was. I was reading something where it said his armor were like were, um, weighed uh, something like two or three hundred pounds. His armor that he carried, that his his um, the head of his spear was like thirty pounds. Wow. So this guy was huge, and he was their champion. Wow. He was their best. Oh my God. Literally, when he saw David, he laughed. He was like, "Are you?" Because David not only was he not in the army, he was a shepherd boy. That's it. He stayed back with his father yeah, while yeah, his yeah. brothers went to the army. Right. But guess what? When Goliath came, they ran. Yeah. Right. David just went to visit them, and he said, you know what? Like, what's going on? Goliath was literally taunting them. He was pacing back and forth, like, pick one. Just show me, show me my opponent, as they say. Pick one. And David said, you know, what's going on? I'll go. But he told him, he said, you come at me with the sword. Come on. I come at you with the power of the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. Yeah. That things in our lives that are so big, so strong. The enemy don't come half-stepping, yeah. ever. Because he comes to destroy. I looked up the definition of destroy once. This, I think it was like my first message. And the definition, the definition of destroy is to put an end to the existence of a thing. The enemy comes to put an end to the existence of a thing when it concerns us. So anything that, any inch that we give him, he's not going to, oh, just tease you. Oh, I just want you to stray a little bit. No, he wants you to fall off. Yeah. To where you don't even recognize yourself. Jesus. That's why we can't give him even a crack. Yeah, yeah. Everything in our lives, we have to hem it up. Come on. Because you can't, you cannot go in the river with a boat with holes in it. Ooh. Think about it. Everything you got to hem it up. Wow. You got to hem it up. It has to be waterproof, tight, sealed. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. I love it. Good. You know, and the reason that God is working towards our perfection is because holiness is His standard. Yes. Yeah. Holiness is and always was God's standard. Right, yes. So, you know, David goes up against Goliath, and, and David didn't go at Goliath with something that Goliath knew. That's right. He went up against him with something that Goliath had never seen before. That's right. That's right. Mm. To be honest, I don't even, because imagine, he is like, I think it was like nine feet tall. He probably didn't even see David pull this slip shot out of his pocket. He's like, what is that? Like, a little stone? What is that? By the time he realized what it was, he was on the ground. Like, I think I was that. And the most beautiful thing I saw out of that story, before it happened, God declared to them, he said, I will reconcile you all with the Philistines. God was the one, like I said, God initiates it. It's up to us. God was the one who said, I'm going to, I'm going to start this up. There was a king before David who did not stay in the will of God. David was the one who not only went after the mission, but stayed in God's will and literally got a sweatless victory. Yes. Yes. Sweatless victory. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't even think he broke a sweat unless he was in Miami. So, <laughs> so these days, you can't even make it to the car. So, <laughs> And then even when you make it to the car, the windows got to go down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, so this is why tests and trials come. Had David, had David not been a shepherd boy, we, we might say, well, David, you know, he should have at least trained. David didn't even train. He put on the armor and he was like, this, this doesn't fit me. Because imagine, these are guys that are used to war. So they train for this. They, they wear armors made of bronze. Bronze is heavy. Yes. He was a shepherd boy. He was like, I can't wear this. I'm not used to this. That's right. Had he not been a shepherd boy and had that mentality of, I'm not afraid of a lion, a tiger, or a bear, so I'm definitely not afraid of you, mm -hmm. and I carry God with me, mm -hmm. had he not been through those trials, imagine you're trying to guard your sheep, and you got to always be watchful, and you're like, why, why? Because of that. Yeah. Because you were called for something. Yes. God was preparing him for Goliath. So you have to look at life as what Goliaths in your life is God preparing you for. You know, there are so many things we go through and we think like, why, why, why? 
Because the next thing that's coming, sweatless victory. Come on. That's even bigger than what you were facing. Yeah. These people were literally like, they were born into the military and they were running from him. He was, one man was pacing back and forth. And they were running at the sight of him. But when you have God on your side, yeah. once again, sweatless yeah. victory. Yeah. There's so many yeah. things. Like, there's things that we were never meant to fight that we're trying to fight on our own. I'll get to that. That's that's oh, that's okay. the Hold next on. step. So, on. That's it. so that was um point number one, that the will of God is alive in the river. river. Amen. Point number two, obedience is the standard in the river. Yes. Come on. There's a reason for this. Now, when I say obedience, I mean obedience. You know, the command the, the, the command of God is the command of God. Like, God, he doesn't negotiate. He doesn't, you know, change make deals. Like, whatever he says, that's what he says. Obedience. But what I'm talking about is following the voice of God. So we have obedience as in doing what he says. And then we have obedience as in following his will, following his voice. Yeah. And the reason that we have to follow his voice, that we have to learn to follow his voice, that we have to, to learn to, to, to know him intimately, yeah. is because transformation does not happen overnight. Amen. There, many of the times I will say that, because God moves how he wants to move. The reason I say that is because a lot of times we're so hard on ourselves. Like, I remember, you guys know, I always say this, wretched to wretches. So, <laughs> you know, I was in a struggle to give up fornication. And I was so hard on myself sometimes because I thought I made the decision, hello, like, what else is there? That's right. And God was doing a work in me. Mm -hmm. There were things that if I didn't go through the process, I wasn't going to get it. That's right. It, there were so many times I didn't get it. And I was looking at myself like, what is wrong with you? Like, seriously, it's a simple thing. And no, when you have a stronghold, there's some things that you got to work out. That's right. Yes. That's but you have to be attentive to God's voice. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to do things my way. And God is saying, no, I want you to listen to my voice. Learn to hear what I sound like. Yes. Mm -hmm. You should know what I sound like. That way you'll know what I don't sound like. That's right. Come on. Mm -hmm. You see, we have to learn God's voice so deeply that Literally, he could say, go left, and we're like, oh. It's not a, oh, wait, was that you? Wait. Right. Do you think, well, uh, was that him? Um, No, no, no. When he says, go left, go left. Go left. Because that's where he is. Mm -hmm. When he says, go right, go right. Because that's where his will is. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, transformation, like we said, it doesn't always happen all at once. And um, so, Pastor Sean, she had um, sent me a uh you can say like a short little biography of a woman named Catherine Coleman mm -hmm. I don't know if you all know her mm -hmm. but um you know she was a great woman of God and the the, the passage it talks about her um her life and her dedicate her dedication to God but I just remember out of everything I read the first section it said um she was so communicative with God that you couldn't tell where she ended and the Holy Spirit began. Wow. Like that was the way she lived her life. Mm. That is how we are meant to be. Yeah. It's not meant for us to be like in and out. It's not. Because when you are in and out, the moment you step out, you're vulnerable. Because the enemy is always waiting. He's always waiting. When you're, you have to stay in so that you stay in line, you stay protected. When you're in God's presence and he can talk to you in that moment, even the littlest things you will not have trouble with. Yeah. The, you may think that, oh, that's a, you know, I was talking about me buying a car. You may think, oh, you know, that that's that's so small. Like, you know, God doesn't really care about that. No, it, it's, it's real. That was like my first time hearing God's voice. Mm -hmm. Like literally, he was talking to me. I bought this car. At first, I told the Lord, I was like, you know, I want a used car. He had other plans for me. I didn't want car payments. I was so scared. My car has been repossessed. Not my car, but my family's car had been repossessed before. Right. So I was scared. No, I don't want payments. I want to pay cash in this market. Mm -hmm. Couldn't find a car. That was worth the money. Finally found one, but I didn't wait for God. So I just jumped. I got in there. Oh, I wanted that car. I, barely, I test drove the car like around the corner. Yep, let's go. 
like, you know, I didn't check it out, nothing. So I'm signing, like, let's go, let's hurry up. This is my card, I mean, here's the money. Okay, didn't even check out all the paperwork and the deal, didn't know that, you know, you gotta be, you gotta watch over people who deal with your money. <laughs> I'll put it that way. So, got myself into a whole heap of trouble, not realizing exactly what I was signing. Right. So, now, literally years later, because I, I, I lost sleep over this, like three weeks. I, I, was, I couldn't sleep because I'm like, even if I sell the car, I still owe. Like, how is that? So, finally, I told the Lord, I said, God, I'm just going to leave it to you. If you're going to solve, I'm going to make my payments. And if you're going to solve it, you're going to bring it up again because I'm done with it. I was so stressed. Years later, this car dealership called me. Oh, hey, we want you to trade in your car. I said, oh, no, I'm not coming there. This happened, that happened. <laughs> they call me in, and we're talking. And literally, I hear the Holy Spirit tell me. But that was at a time when I had just joined the church. And I was learning so much. And we were in a mode where we were practicing hearing God's voice on a daily. I remember we had done an exercise. So I was getting used to hearing his voice. So literally, I'm sitting in front of them. I said nothing about money. All I said was the guy, the guy wanted me to speak with his manager to tell him what happened so they could improve. And I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, I'm going to give you all your money back. Like everything that you paid to them um, extra, you're going to get it back. Mm -hmm. Even though they told you no several times. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening to him. And this is how the enemy works. I see manager after manager. No, 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 no. We're not going to give it to you. No, no, no. It's too long. It's been two years. It's over. Finally, someone comes and he says, I told you what we'll do. I'll give you half of your money back because that's what the contract says. And then I'll give you like five free services. And that sounded pretty good because I'm counting the, you know, the amount in my head. I'm like, well, that's not too bad. No, that's the enemy. Holy Spirit told me right away, I said all. So I told him, no, I want all of it. Literally, I go home, I hear nothing from them for like two days. I'm like, Lord, what do I do? Now I'm at home, I don't have any leg to fight. Like I was there, nothing happened, now I'm at home just waiting for them to say no, I don't know. I get a, I literally wake up that morning, get in his presence one, once again. I literally got in my car, put the key in and turn. I got a phone call. Oh, hi, Ashley, we have the check for you. We just want you to come sign it. Just like that. Had I not heard God's voice tell me, And the way it helped is that, that we say it works for your good, because okay. I took that money and I put it on the principal, it helped me to pay my car early. We said that obedience is um, hearing God's voice. Obedience is also giving up control. Okay, so in my life, I have a problem with not being in control, and that's something that I've learned over these past few years. That I noticed that I have to be in control of everything or I don't feel comfortable. Yes, Lord. It's like, oh, we're going, oh, what time? Who's going to be there? Oh, how much should I need? Oh, it, it's like, actually, just, we're going to take care of it. You just come. Oh, yeah, but um, what do I need to wear? Like, you not telling me anything. That is usually how I operate. So I remember my boss told me once, he said, Ashley, you have really good ideas, but you take too long to pull the trigger. Like, you got to be. You know, just, just shoot for it. Like, you, you have to know everything. He calls it um, paralysis by analysis. Oh, my God. Meaning that I'm stuck because I'm too busy trying to make sure yeah. everything is straight before I shoot. He's like, actually, just shoot. Even if you make a mistake, it's fine. I'm not going to, you know, kill you. It's fine. So, um, and, you know, he was teaching me, you know, just to shoot. So, even to this day in my own life, I still have like an issue with that where I'm still trying to learn to, to release and let things Jesus. go. Even things that are not even in my control, I try to somehow control. <laughs> like I try to formulate like 
You know, like if you come to me with a problem, I'm gonna try to solve your problem. Like I have no resources. I don't even know how I'm gonna do it, but we gonna figure this out. <laughs> so I was getting to a place recently, like over the past few months, where my whole life was getting out of control. Every aspect of my life, from my work to my personal to my relationships, like family life, everything, my spiritual life, nothing was in order. Nothing was was constant, nothing was stable, everything was just here. And I felt overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I received the word from the Lord out of this house. Can we say this house? This yeah. house. Okay, so I love my church, y'all know that. So, <laughs> so and, and the Lord was telling me, he said, I'm allowing you to feel overwhelmed because you won't give it to me. Mm. He said, as long as you don't give it to me, you're gonna feel like that. Jesus. Wow. The moment you give it to me, you'll be fine. But as long as you don't, you're going to feel overwhelmed. Oh my God. You're going to feel out of control because you're going to be out of control. Yes. So even for me, like writing this message, so I heard that word, right? So I'm like, okay, Lord. So I start thinking in my head, once again, trying to be in control. What do I need to do to <laughs> try to write steps? Like, what do I need to do to not be in control? I'm making a plan of how I'm not going to be in control of the plan. Okay. <laughs> like, y'all get where I'm coming from. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm going to write this message. And thank you, Minister Esther. Because <laughs> she's been walking this walk with me. But um, I'm going to write the message. And I... I get nothing. So the first time, God was testing me and teaching me how to like really listen for him and you know, even if I don't give you too much, you just need to be ready. So this time, he gave me even less than last time. So I'm just like, Lord, I, I, I don't know what to do. I told him, I said, I was gonna get up here. If I didn't hear God, I was not gonna make up nothing. He was gonna close it out, I was gonna pass the mic. Whatever the Holy Spirit wanted to do, he was going to do. So, and I'm sitting there struggling. I'm like, Lord, like, what do I, I need something. Like, I, I get, and I told him, I'm like, I get it that you're trying to get me to wait on you and listen to your voice, but you got to give me something to work with. I'm telling him, I don't operate like that. <laughs> like, you know how I am. You're going to send me up there with an opening scripture? Like, oh, good morning. And that's it. Like, no, I need something, you know? And God immediately told me, he said, no, don't plan too much because you got to leave room for me. That's right. He said, if you, if you write it down because you know how you are, you're going to read off the paper. I'm telling you, don't write too much because I want you to say what I say. You're going to be like, oh, I didn't finish the paper. No, he said, say what I say. So that's why I'm not going to give you too much. So finally, I went to bed. I'm not going to say what time, but I went to bed. <laughs> so, you know, and God, he's telling us, like, a part of obedience is us giving up control. Yes, Lord. Us allowing him to lead. When we give up control, we are accepting his vision. We're accepting his direction. When he says, I will direct thy path, we can't be like, oh, I want to go there. And he's telling you, go here. And you're like, no, but I'm over right. here. He's like, no, I will direct thy path. Go there. He's saying, make a left, make a left, make That's a right, good. make a right. That's good. If he's telling you to jump in, you got to jump in. Because I'm telling you, there's nothing on the bank. Nothing. It's all the trash, all the stuff that washed up. Everything that's alive is in the river. That's it. Everything that's dead, that's lifeless, gets washed up on the side. That's right. Oh, my God. Thank you. My God. So, the third point. The third point is that the promise is in the pressing towards the river. The promise of God is in us pressing towards the river. So the promise to be, that, that we want to be fulfilled is in the river. But the enemy is always setting up roadblocks for us to not make it. Oh my God. He doesn't even mind if you go ankle deep. He doesn't even mind if you go waist deep. He doesn't want you to be submerged. That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. He don't mind if you go deep and you got wet. He just, oh, I feel good. That was good. I got enough to last me through the week. No. God is saying that 
in the river, once you be, once you are consumed, I have things for you that will you will be able to sustain yourself. You'll be able to deliver yourself through Christ. But I'm saying He gives you the power. There's so many things He said. When when I leave, I'll leave one greater than me, a helper, 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 help you. Meaning you can do it. He's a helper. Come on, yeah. come on. You can do it by yourself. He's a helper. Yeah. Right, right, right. We look to him as if he's still the one. Like Lord, I need you to. Do. No, he's like I left you somebody. Come on. A lot of the re- time, the, a lot of times, the reason why we're waiting is because we're waiting for things that he's given up already. Come on. Already. Mm-hmm. He's already given up. Yes. Mm-hmm. And we're still waiting, and he's like, No, you have it. I don't have it. You have it. Jesus. 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 He has it, but he's saying, I've empowered you. You have it. Jesus. So pressing, even when we don't feel like it, which is the biggest thing for me. One of the things I've been working on and God has been working on with me, and why I say that is because when God works on things with us, he tests us along the way. That's the hard part. So if you want to work on you know, being rich, you're going to test and see how you are with money. That's you right. really want to work hard. Right. You know, getting a good husband, can you clean your own house? So, yeah. We're not going to talk about the laundry that's on my floor right now, but <laughs> <laughs> my husband is not going to see that. I <laughs> so, um, you know, but even when we don't feel like it, we have to press. Yes. And God, he, the trials that he gives us are to prove us and make us stronger. That's right. You can't look at it ever as, as something that's going to destroy us or something that's going to beat us down because it's not. His word says that all things work for our good. And I will tell you, our spirit does not operate based on feelings. That's right. That's so your spirit, it. man, does not operate based on how you feel. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we, we, we cannot be ignorant to that fact. To think that because I feel bad today, I'm going to starve my spirit and not talk to him. Oh. Yes, I love you, Lord. And I've done that so many times where I'm like, I feel so down. And I'll literally tell him, I'm not going to talk to you. Like, Lord, I just don't feel like praying today. I'm just, I just want to just be quiet. No, that's the time when it's like, Lord, I need you. Yeah. Now is the time I need you to step in. Yeah. I need you to carry me now. Like, Lord, I'm calling on your power because I know no one else can do it. That's right. There's no one else who has the power to carry me in this moment. That's it. That's it. Jesus. So, um, Pastor Sean also said that some things don't come out in the wash. We were having a conversation about trials that we go through. And she said, everything doesn't come out in the wash. When she first said it, I didn't understand what she meant. I'm like, well, that's the point of washing, to wash it clean. What she was saying is, you have those little surface level stains, like, oh, you spilled some soda. Then you got ketchup, you got wine, you got um, marinara sauce, soak. You got to soak it. Yes. Those things, it doesn't just take, oh, throw it in the wash, turn that's it on, right. and walk away. Right. No, you have to treat it. Yes. What she's saying is, you have to press. You have to get it done. You have to pay it attention. That's what she was saying. And it's true. God, like everything that we need, he has for us. There's, there's nothing that we're ever going to need that, that God is just going to say, oh, well, give me a second. I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out. No, he already has it. Because remember, he already was. He already was. That's good. And one thing that I heard that rings true, sometimes it's the trauma that saves us. Yes. Okay. What I mean by that is, especially for me, for example, there's things that I've gone through so many times to where it took for me to get knocked over the head to be like, I ain't doing that again. (laughs) And that's what's saving me now. It wasn't just me on my own, like, oh, I'm done with that. Okay. No, it took for me to get a bump on the head to be like, no, you know what? That's not for me. I remember last time. If that's what it takes, God will allow you to get that bump on your head. That's right. That's good. Thank you, Lord, for the bump. Thank you for the bump. Yes. 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 You know, and with this, we have to remember that the enemy will always be after us. Like, 
his desire, like I think the scripture says, he comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. Meaning that if he's not coming to steal, kill, destroy, he's yeah. not coming. Yeah. He's not coming. Yeah. Like if he's anywhere around, that's when he's coming to do it. Exactly. And for no other reason. That is the reason why we must be submerged. We must transform into our true selves, our true beings. We can't just be wishy-washy and jumping in today, jumping out tomorrow, I'm gonna do this today, or God is okay with that, no. Cause we know, yeah. after a while we know. Yeah. We make excuses, but we know. Yeah. And I wanna say this, the enemy has big boundaries, big boundaries. What I mean is there's so much that he cannot do. We always think about what he can do. There's so much he can't do. Mm -hmm. there, there, because remember, when we're in the will of God, we are shielded. Mm -hmm. Remember, he says, abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Who would dare come under his shadow and take you? Come on. Come on. Who? Mm -hmm. Like when he's telling you, abide under the shadow, mm -hmm. he's telling you, I will make you to lie down in green pastures. Meaning you can be out in the open, relaxing, with your eyes closed, basking in the sun, without a care in the world, because of me. There's so much that the enemy can't do, but we have to ensure that we don't give him access. That's the only thing. He tries to put things in our path and in our way to make us alter the way we think. So we think that good things are bad and bad things are good. And we think that we're less than, and we think that we're not enough, and good. we think that things take too long, longer than they should, and everything is skewed. Yes. So that makes us, because we are not surrendering control, that makes us want to do it on our own. Yeah. Because we have the need to be in control. Oh, I really want this and it's so close. I see it, so I'm gonna go get it. No, he's saying, wait for me. Mm -hmm. Because whatever God brings is perfect. Right. Anything else yes. is questionable. Yes. Yes. God operates from a place of perfection. perfection. Yes. Mm -hmm. So anything else is, is questionable. Questionable. My God. My you know, God. we talked about building a foundation on shaky ground. So if it's not from God, it's shaky. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. We can say, oh, it looks good. Oh, it's been holding up this long. Yeah, but you're still vulnerable. That's it. You get to the category five and it's over. That's it. That's it. So in these times, we have to remember the promises of God. So even in the times when the trials come and, you know, we're jumping in the river and it's hard and, you know, the transformation, it seems like, why is it taking forever? We have to remember the promise of God. We have to remember that, that his grace and his mercy follow us. We have to remember that he promised to transform us. Yes. We talked about grace. Yes. I think it was in, um, I always say Romans. It was in John. John, because I always say Romans. <laughs> it was in John, and we talk about how, um, you know, God's grace, or, or, or God is, is powerful enough to transform us from sin. So we have sinned. And we will mess up, but, and we do mess up, but God is saying he is powerful enough to, to redeem us from that. Yes. Mm -hmm. That we don't yes. stay in that place, yes. but we have to allow him that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, I want to, in, in closing, to turn to Romans 8 and 28. It says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So I, I, I've been stuck on this scripture for a while now because, you know, we love the word all in this house. <laughs> because when it says all, he means all. God does not, you know, mess up his words. If he said all, he means all. But I want us to take a look at the word good. So what I was thinking in my head is, Lord, if you said that all things work for my good, then why is it that I still hold on to things that I know are not of you? And he told me that it's because we have been tricked to think that God's good isn't good enough. Oh my God. Oh my God. Fulfilled, that this God who is so patient, so loving, so giving, so perfect, so kind, 
so fulfilling, creator of the earth, My God. creator of everything that is good, the heavens, everything under the heavens, is capable of giving us something that is not enough. Mm. Jesus. That even after he gets what he wants, we surrender to him. We are following him, we're listening to his voice, and he's taking us all around. The enemy has tricked us into thinking that we will still be left unfulfilled. Jesus. And the enemy, you know, not only does he not have power, but he cannot even compare. When we think about, that, that's why it's true when we say, you know, he has no rival. Like, the devil is not the, the equivalent opposite of God. That's right. That's no. God has no opposite. That's right. That's it. There was a scripture that said, I forgot which one it was, but it says, I am not just, you know, the best God or, you know, the biggest God. He says, I am the only God. God. That's it. That's it. Only God. Okay. You know, we make up gods. Come on. We make up gods in our lives. Yeah. Things that we just have to have that. <coughs> but God says, I am the only true and living God. Yes. Yes. We have to jump in the river. Yes, yes, yes. And I was looking at the definition of good. The definition of good means to be desired or approved of. So if we read that scripture again, it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the things that are to be desired and approved of, of those who love him. Meaning not only are these things good for us, they are good to us. That's right. Mm -hmm. They are good in us. They're good, good from us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our whole lives will be engulfed in goodness because of him. Mm -hmm. But again, we have to jump in. Mm -hmm. So as I close, I just, you know, this message was really personal to me because the first message that I gave, which was a few weeks ago or a few months ago, was on surrender. And I was so nervous, I'm still nervous today, um, to give that message because I felt like I hadn't arrived. Like, how am I going to give a message on something that I'm still learning? This message is something that God made it a point, and I'm still learning this also, to speak to me about jumping in. And, and, and the transformation process of jumping in. There's so many things that we want and that we're expecting and that we're, we're working towards. And God is saying, you really don't have to work that hard. Like everything that you need is in me. So all these things that you want, if you would just jump in, you will find it there. The problem is we're still looking on the sand. We're still looking on the, you know, on the bank. And we're like, no, that's not it. That's seaweed. What is this? Oh, that's a cup. What is this? A dead. That's a, that's dead. That, what is this? Jesus. And you say, oh, you want something alive? You want something fresh? You want something flowing? It's in the river. And that is the only place you will find it. God does not make mistakes. When He created us, He made no mistakes. Everything that we we're meant to be is already in us. He wants to manifest it out. But he needs us to surrender, to give him that access. Yes. Yes. To jump in and enjoy. Not just to jump in and drown. He's saying, jump in and enjoy the goodness that I have for you. So I submit that to you today, that if you haven't surrendered to God, if you haven't jumped in, if you haven't tasted the fullness of God, not just, not just the the waist deep or the knee deep or the ankle deep. No, jumps in. It's time for all of us to be submerged. To be submerged. He's calling us to be submerged. He's saying, "There is where you'll find my wisdom. There is where you'll find the, the mending of broken hearts. There is where you'll find things that you need to survive." And it's time for us to let go of that that notion that you know God isn't good enough. That oh, but if I do this, I, I'm not going to be fulfilled. He's saying I am the one who fulfills. 
I am God. Like if anything is going to be fulfilled, it's from me. I'm the one who fills. I made the cup and the filling in the cup. Thank you. We honor you this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. 